So uh, let's finally nail it with Dave uh, from Nigeria. So let's tell us what's happening with the pension sector in Nigeria, the reforms that are happening there as well. And uh, if you could just share a little bit what's happening in terms of the uh, of the whole uh, regulation as well, uh, because you know initially, as you know, we would we, we were supposed to get a regulator, but uh, I would like you to just talk about some of the regulations as well. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so I'll talk about the Nigerian pension market, um, the reforms where we are. Um, I'll talk about um, some of the regulatory um, um, issues and the outlook. I will also talk about the African Pension Fund Network. Um, so Nigerian pension market is largely a defined contribution market, started about 10 years ago, 2004. Um, it's completely privatized. There are no government funds in Nigeria, so that's the first point to note. Um, there are 25, 27 managers, they are all pri private sector companies. Um, so in a sense, they, are, they operate like banks, so uh, they operate like asset managers, but with a focus on pensions. They are SPVs, they can't do any other thing but manage pension funds. Um, so one of the challenges in the local markets is that you see the pension funds are crowding out other asset managers. Um, so currently we have $25 billion under management in the industry. Um, that number is a lot bigger in local currency, but we've had devaluation challenges. Um, it's, like I said, 27 managers. The market's growing at between 25 and 30% per annum. Um, in terms of the contribution rate, it's 18% um, of salaries. It's, it's mandatory for all em em employees to have pension account in Nigeria. Any company that has five, a uh, working population of five staff must have pension um, um, pension scheme for them. So, and it's it's criminal not to do so. Um, in terms of the, we are seven million contributors uh, out of a working population of 70 million. So it's very small, early stage market, 10% penetration rates. In terms of the um, assets under management, as a percentage of GDP, is about 5%. Um, so and relative to South Africa, which is about 70%. So essentially, it's an early, early stage market. It's just growing. The, the, the contribution contributors are very young, uh, about 70% uh, below the age of 40. Um, and, and you know the fund is tracking very well. Um, in terms of assets, um, asset, um, asset allocation, it's um, currently 100% invested in Nigeria. So that's uh, a bit of a shame for um, more international fund managers. Um, uh, because um, the, the, the whole idea and the thinking of government and regulators is that there are incredible, incredible opportunities in Nigeria. There are huge challenges and um, funding deficits across all sectors, housing, infrastructure, private equity, you know, companies, SMEs. So, you know, so the idea is to, you know, keep most of these monies locally. Um, currently, 70% of that money is invested in government bonds, 13% um, in listed equities, 5% in real estate, um, that and 20% uh, in, in money market securities of banks. Um, th so the government bond market is very, is very, is the deep, deepest market in Nigeria. It's very deep secondary markets. Issuance levels are very high, and you know, like the I think one of the speakers said on the panel. Um, it gives you real rate of return, um, positive real rate of return, even adjusting for currency devaluation. So it's a, it's a very good, it's an attractive um, instrument for, for pension funds. Um, however, there, there's been you know, a lot of talk about you know, diversifying these monies. Uh, what you find is that when pension market starts, you know, they usually start with government bonds because they're usually the safest and one of the primary considerations for pensions is safety, safety of the funds and ability to meet financing um, to finance annuities when they are due. Um, in terms of where the, the we see reforms going and, and the challenge, one of the key challenges is the debt of instruments in the local markets. Um, the reason why the pension funds are not invested or investing in things like alternatives and private equity range from regulation. So the regulation, like I said, means that we can only invest in instruments in Nigeria. We're allowed to invest in practically everything, infrastructure bonds, infrastructure funds, private equity housing, but they must be launched and managed by Nigerian registered companies. And they, um, for PE and infrastructure, 70%, 75% of the funds raised must be invested in Nigeria. 25% can be invested in anywhere. So that's one of the local, one of the challenges. There's a debt of domestic fund managers. 
there's also you know a depth of skills in you know in pension pension <coughs> uh, industry in being able to analyze these instruments and and you know so that's where the market is going however there are you know regulatory reforms being carried out to to open up the market one of one of the things that the government is doing or the regulator is to introduce a multi-fund regime which allows you know members to choose from three up to four funds depending on how old they are and the first fund which is for the young uh, youngest members um, can invest up to 60 percent in equities you know including private equity um, infrastructure um, any any um, uh, any asset class that has you know the risk is not you know is that is not fixed income and we see that as opening up the market. Um, the other point and uh, the other regulatory uh, future is the minimum 5% allocation to alternative investments, which the government is trying to use to force, in a sense, force pension fund managers to invest in you know, infrastructure and, and um, uh, private equity and housing. There's also um, the need to improve access to infrastructure. I mean, the huge infrastructure deficit in Nigeria, financing deficits. <coughs> Um, means that government is looking for ways to do that. Um, the challenge is currently because all the infrastructure, most of the infrastructure in Nigeria are greenfield assets and pension funds typically don't invest in those so sort of assets because of the risk levels. So the government is trying to encourage working with the sovereign wealth fund um, to uh, issue guarantees either from government or other, other entities to, to, to mitigate the risk of investing in, in, in infrastructure. Um, like I said, there are several million contributors all of them are in the formal sector. There's no informal sector um, pension in Nigeria. So one of the things that regulators is doing is to open up the informal sector using things like mobile money platform, working with banks and telcos to improve collection because 80% of the working population in Nigeria in the informal sector, if you come to Lagos, a huge market. In the market, they sell, I mean, anybody that's come to Lagos, you can't but go to there's a market behind my office i think let's say <laughs> <laughs> when the women come they always stop by that buy things it's very huge market but it's completely informal i mean transaction there runs into billions of naira every day but completely informal that's the market that government is trying to open up um the other thing is investment in housing um there's been uh, the government last year formed the nigeria mortgage refinancing corporation to open up um mortgage financing in Nigeria and the, and the pension funds, they recently issued a bond which some of the pension funds invested in and the proceed will be used to you know, fi provide a secondary market for mortgages um, in, uh, in, in the country. So that's where we are with the pension, Nigerian pension markets. Um, I'll just end with um, the African Pension Fund Network. So what we realized was that some of the challenges I've mentioned cut across most countries in Africa. So working with African Development Bank, making finance work for Africa, which is the initiative of the G8. W last year, we formed the African Pension Fund Network um, in Dakar, Senegal, um, during one of the AFDB's meetings. What we realized is that about $350 billion of pension funds in Africa, um, largely from South Africa, Nigeria, Botswana, um, East Africa, um, Namibia, and most of these funds are invested in government bonds except, um, except South Africa. Uh, so we, we, we realize that the problem in Africa is not necessarily the, the funds, but it's the structures to allow the funds to go into the real sector. And, you know, we also think that the big deal in Africa is really the pension funds, not the sovereign wealth funds, because sovereign wealth funds are very small. Um, in Nigeria, sovereign wealth fund is less than $2 billion. In South Africa, I don't think they really have a sovereign wealth fund, because like uh, Fuller has just mentioned, the PIC is not a sovereign wealth fund. So in Africa, the big deal is the pension funds. We from the growth rate that I've just told you, um, in 2025, there'll be about a trillion dollars of pension funds in Africa. And pension reforms are happening everywhere. everywhere. Um, they're opening up, you know, Uganda, Ghana, everywhere, it's happening everywhere, you know. So we think that, um, so we decided to form this network to, for, to serve as a voice for pension on the continent to lobby and form as advocacy with government and regulators to open up the investment market, particularly cross-border investments. There's huge opportunities for cross-border investments. Um, infrastructure investments are huge. Um, and most African pension funds are small, I mean, if you're excluding the GEPF. Uh, so we think that they could work together um, to co-invest <coughs> in projects across the continent. We also want to encourage regulators to completely remove all the restrictions that you know, inhibit investments in, in other African countries. Um, yesterday, I was speaking to the CEO of 
equity bank. And he said to me, look, my friend, you missed out because the PE guys had invested in, in equity bank. They made 463% return in, you know, in US dollars in, in five years. And these are some of the sort of investment that we cannot do from, from Nigeria. So we think that um, working with the African Pension Fund Network and all the big pension funds in Africa, we can remove those restrictions and open up the market to, to financing um, by pension funds in Africa. Thank you. Dave, you've done really, really well because you've actually <laughs> answered my next question, So, which is uh, what's you know the reforms that are currently taking place and how is, how is that affecting uh, uh, the improvements within the sectors. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.